Hi, my name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops and complete commission projects for clients all around the world. Before we get started, I'd like to ask you a favor and go down below, hit the subscribe button, and what that will do is notify you when new videos come out and when I do my live video sessions or live interactive chats. Today, we're going to do a burled mahogany technique. Um, pretty simple. Let's get our tools, let's get our materials, and let's get started. All right, so the first thing I've done to get ready for today's technique is base coated the surface using an eggshell enamel. It's an orange color, rather it looks, so I look off the side here so I can see what you're seeing, but for some reason it looks a little yellow. Um, but it's orange, the color of an orange. It's actually from Benjamin Moore, it's called Orange Peel. Now, what we're gonna be using is glaze from our friends at Modern Masters, the tintable, can you see that? Tintable glaze, water-based, interior-only tints with pigment, never paint, only pigment because anything else will make it dry too quickly. All right, this has a, this is capable of drying all on its own. If you add paint into it, it's gonna dry like that. And it also becomes more opaque. We don't want that. We want it to stay somewhat translucent. Not somewhat, we want it to have that translucent property to it. So tints with pigment, cleans up with soap and water, interior-only. And I've tinted it to do <laughs> a couple different colors here. Got like a mahogany color and a red mahogany color. So now what we're going to do for this pearled finish is take my brush that I had here earlier. Doesn't seem to want to show up. There it is. Okay, just a regular little brush. We're going to take the lighter color. Hmm. Let's see. Sorry, I was looking for something else. Actually, I want to take and coat the surface with a clear glaze. Slip coat it. I should have a bigger brush, but I'm not going to stop to go get one. All right, the reason I'm doing this is to hydrate the surface. I know it's going to take a minute because I'm using a small brush. I understand, but all the brushes are way on the other side of the shop and it just won't take that long. So you put a nice even coat on it. Typically I would just use a nice big paintbrush, like a wall brush. I typically use my two and a half inch Purdy Nylon, Pe Black Purdy Nylon Peacock Black Bristle Brush. And just because it's nice and soft. Don't pile this on, okay? Just put a nice even coat. So what it does, this paint is thirsty. It's on the surface, so this meaning it's on the wall, or a column, whatever you're doing, a door. But by adding this clear coat of glaze, it's a slip coat. So this is absorbing, or the, the paint's drinking this in. So it's absorbing this. That way when you put your color glaze on, it will not soak that in, and this allow you a lot more time to work. There we go, boom. Okay, so now it's gonna take my mahogany color. and just kind of tap it in various places, like so. And I'm also rotating the brush around, see that? There's not really a rhyme or reason to it just yet. Let's just get the color on. Pull off the excess, let's go to the red mahogany. We're gonna put that in these other areas. Not overlapping, it's just kinda dancing with it. I said not overlapping, What's, what do I just turn around to do? I just overlap, not the end of the world. Just leave some open space, okay? Now I do need one thing, which I don't have handy. Give me one second, I gotta grab the uh, rubbing alcohol, I'll be right back.
three, two, one. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is take good old fashioned rubbing alcohol. Uh, it's 91% and you'll understand why in just a second. So I'm going to clean my brush up best I can here. Hit this mess that I have. It won't work there. So let's just use our finger. Oh no, we got another brush. There we go. So I'm gonna put this brush down in here. Get a little wet. And what I'm gonna do is put this in the open areas. It's okay if it's gonna get some dripping. Don't worry about it. I'm not gonna worry about all the open areas. I just want it in some of the open areas, okay? And the reason for this is that the alcohol and the glaze don't like each other. So when we do the next step, it will help part of our process. Now, we're gonna grab a piece of plastic, thin plastic. This is like 0.7 millimeters thick. Put the lid back on the alcohol so it doesn't evaporate. So I just use these little trash bag liners. Open them up. And I want nothing, no color on these. Like no grocery store bags or logos because that can hit this surface and cause a problem. So now what I'm going to do is kind of open it, crinkle it up, get any folds and creases. Now I'm just going to take it and turn it on itself like so. And what I'm going to do is just roll through this. Let's see if it works. It's not working very well, so let me just turn it around here. Swirl it. There we go, break that up. Give me one second. See you in a minute. Three, two, one. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, is take the same plastic, put my finger on it. Actually, let's get a clean piece. I don't feel like getting my hands all dirty. Take a finger, like so. All right, so we're gonna go into the darker areas. And kind of start, not kinda, we're creating our knots. Only in the darker areas, okay? And I'm gonna vary in sizes. Small ones, bigger ones. We can create some different ones here. Kind of build it up a little bit. Just focusing on those darker areas, because why we focus on the darker areas is that's where the darker color comes from the wood, creating that like cancer when you see it. That's it for that. Now, I'm gonna take, uh, where is it? Where are you? Where's my brush, my mottler? Where'd you go? Just saw it. Tag on it. 
have several. Well, that's not fun. Not fun at all. Hmm. So that means you don't clean up your workstation. Oh, look at that. They're right where I left them. <laughs> Under my jacket. Okay. Anyway, th uh, this is a brass modeler because it has a bra uh, brass fer uh, fer ferrule that all the bristles set in. This is from the Whistler Company in uh, England. These brushes are, one, hard to find, um, very hard to find. So when you have them, take very good care of them. I want to say these are about, last time I checked, $75 a brush, maybe a little bit more. Um, but you're going to have, gosh, they don't, I, well, I will put a link in the description to these if I can find them, and I'll find you a less expensive one. I do want to say that I believe here at the studio, we had some made because for a while they weren't making these, and we had another company make a, a brush as closely as uh, God, I can't talk. A replica as close as possible. We could get that hog hair brass modeler. And uh, anyway, these are my favorites. I've had these going on, believe it or not, 15, probably 15 to 20 years, and they're still in fantastic shape because the way they go. Now, all my knots that I've created, I'm going to kind of come around here a little bit and just start to swirl around my knots. <coughs> <coughs> So I've got to watch where I'm going, okay? Because I've got a lot of stuff happening here. And I don't want to go through these knots. So you'll see I'll kind of... Alright. I'll bring this up close in a second. So I've got something happening here. So I don't want to like compete against it. It has to kind of flow with it. This is going to come back around like so. Look right there. Oops, my big old head's in the way. Sorry. So we're gonna come in here, kinda of just come up. There. Now, that's out of the way. Let's take our measure brush. Triple row. Actually, I'm not crazy about some of this. I want to fix some of this. Sorry. This is a little too big over here. I'm going to just kind of bring this around. Yeah. No. I'm not happy about that cluster. Where did my paper go? It's fine. Let's soften a crop. Just a little bit across, not to make it muddy. So what I'm doing, these little, see these swirly lines? So what I'm gonna do, lack of a better turn, this is the green. Swirly lines, knucklehead. All right, so there's one here, it goes this way. I'm gonna soften it this way. So it looks like the sap or simulates the sap pushing out through the vein, the texture of the uh, the grain. Okay, just lightly, all of those. Because you got to remember, when this is growing in that tree, it's doing its thing. This is going this way. This is going that way. It's growing all these different directions, and it just has a life of its own. We're going to come back to the knots in a little bit and clean those up. I don't want to finish them yet because I got to go through this part of the process. 
just a light touch. So if I meant by that, I mean if I finish those, not good. All right, now, next step in the process. Where's my other little brush here? Okay. Ah, got glaze on it, dead on it. Here we go, stencil brush. This is a very um, special brush, actually. I need to make a video about this. Look at this. Brand new, never been used. This brush is older than I am. Um, I'm going to do a whole separate video on this. I might even do a live uh, video about this because um, I love this brush. Look how beautiful it is. I'm almost ashamed to use it. It's handmade. A gentleman came by uh, years ago when I had my studio downtown, Frederick. And... Um, I thought he was sell, it's like selling paint brushes. Um, he kept calling. He went, do you want some brushes? So my sister invited him in. She used to run the office for me at that time. And um, he was born and raised in, or his father was born and raised in Germany and went to the trade schools in Germany and got his master papers in 1922. And that was his father. And then he took over the craft and got a lot of the tools. He never had a son or a daughter to take over or teach, so um, he gave me all of his books, his brushes, some of his father's brushes, and a lot of handmade tin stencils, so I'm going to share that with you because it's really, really cool. But anyway, let's take a stencil brush. You know what? I'm going to go get a cheap stencil brush. I don't want to use this one. This is like special, so give me one second. Okay, sorry about that. I was really thought I was going to use that brush, and um, you know what? The more I thought about it, just it's brand new, and the thing is so old. Um, I'd be ashamed to use it. So we're just going to use. And I just broke it. <laughs> there we go. All right, we're just going to use a just a stencil brush. It's a short, stiff bristle. Okay, this is a little looser than what I like it to be, but it's older. It's been used quite a bit. Now, in these knots, I'm going to come in here and take this and twirl it, okay? And some of these, watch. There's a little cluster right there, so I might, instead of one big one, I might just add one or two. Because that's sort of how this happens. But now I can take the brush, put some pressure on it, and create a bigger one. And then as I do, I swirl it, so I, oh, look at the knot. Isn't that great? Now, like a big one here, let's take this. Let me go back here. I want to make this a pretty good size one. So I'm going to start twisting on the outside, swirling it together. And as I do, I'm very careful, and I pull and lift away. So it pulls the glaze together. But I like the eye. This is more interesting. I don't like the, I, the thought of some big ones. And I tell you, the, I, I see this a lot. Dashboards. I've had a couple of uh, car restoration shops that I work with. And they bring me old dashboards and ask me to do burled, wa burled walnut on them, burled alum. But yeah, a couple big ones here and there. Gives it that character. See? And then we'll put some small ones up in here. Now, when you do the small ones, they kind of are next to each other. But see what I'm not doing? By taking and created all this bait. Uh... Oh, Ronnie, get your head together. <sighs> grain. I'm not going into that grain. I want to keep it away from that. The grain, because what happens? These are the hard spots in the wood, so the grain works around these. Okay. Now you can also use different size brushes. That comes in handy too. That way they're all not quite the same size. Could be some big ones, some little ones, all mixed in these clusters. That's such a pretty, pretty wood. It's a little time consuming, I know. The results. Oops. Just take your time because you want to see that slight swirling pattern. Okay? So this is a grain within the grain, sort of. So it's important that these just don't look haphazard and sloppy and they're separated. Let's put a big one here. See if we can get it. 
There we go. Put a bunch of them in this guy. Almost finished. This is pretty simple. It's just time consuming. Staring at wood, go online, look at pictures of Burl Walnut. I'm sorry, Burl Mahogany. I hope I'm not saying walnut this entire time like a knucklehead, and here I am doing it mahogany colors. A couple more. Just a few more in this area here. Yeah, nice. Really pretty. I think we got it all. We do. All right. Oh, no, we don't. There we go. Now we have it. Let's clean this out so we don't make a mess here. I'll get it when we're done. But alright, take a peek. Then we'll come back, let this dry, and do our toning layer on top of it. So far, so good. See all that fun stuff happening in there? Look at that. Coming to life. Pretty. Okay, so let's let this dry, come back, and I'll show you how to do the toning layer. So we'll see you in just a little bit. Okay, so the first step is dried completely. Now we're gonna take the black, pur black bristle, purdy nylon. So it's purdy manufacture. Peacock is the brand, but it's a black nylon bristle brush, very soft brush, and it le leaves less brush marks. Uh, and as soon as I say that, it'll probably leave a bunch of brush marks. Anyway, let's coat this whole guy. So what I did is I take my red mahogany and I've diluted it down to make it even more transparent. This is the Modern Masters Glaze with pigment in it. I'll leave the recipes below in the comments or the description section. If you have questions, ask down below. That's the best way, and I try to get to them as quickly as I can. But so now, see how it tones it down? But if it's too opaque, you're going to lose everything you put underneath, and we don't want that. This helps just to soften it up. And I didn't put a slip coat on here. No need for that this time but I'm gonna even up my glaze, so I'm gonna stretch it out. So I put it on top to bottom, now I'm going left to right. I'm gonna to finish top to bottom. And what that does is it's a nice, even layer. Okay. Finished. Badger brush to triple row silver tip, meaning because there's three rows of badger hair. Silver tip because it's from a more mature animal. And uh, it's setting an epoxy. So now, I'm gonna come in and just stipple this, all right? What that does is helps break up my brush marks a little bit. And it'll give me a little bit interest, more interest as well. Just tap, 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 tap. Not trying to like do anything, just break up my brush marks. I just go in there and soft, see the badger brush is a very soft bristle. Um, if you try to go in there and just soften out some of those brush marks, it's not really going to work. Or you're going to work even harder. It's, it's a lot of work. So by stippling it out, it breaks up those brush marks. And I use this just to come in and soften everything now. So it's a very light touch. Notice the brush is straight into the surface. I'm only working the tips of the bristles. 
There's a lot of hair. Get you out of there. So I'm going to go all different directions. So I want it all completely soft. I don't want to see any brush marks, okay? Listen, you can barely, it just dances across the surface. And that's pretty much it. A simple, fairly simple, quick, easy way to do some burled mahogany. Let's pull the tape, see what we got. The tape always makes it look so, yeah. Uh-oh, here we go. Another way. Look at that, that one little piece just fighting me. The nose, the glaze is wet. Looks so much better when you get the tape off. Aye. Take your time. I could have done this off of the camera so you didn't have to waste time watching it, but it's fine. But there, boom, done. All right, so there you have it. Let's bring it in and take a quick peek. See that? Hope this shows up well for you on the camera. It's hard to see. There it is. See all that pretty movement going on? And you look close, you'll see all the other, everything else happening. See it? Sorry, I have to look over there. I'm trying to see. I put it over here, I can't see anything. But there, there's your girl mahogany. Pretty. There you have it. Simple, easy to do. Now, once it's dry, I would probably clear coat this. Um, I'm sorry, and I will still use an oil-based product. Um, the clear coat I usually use is Old Masters. I love the oil-based uh, varnish. And I most likely would put satin on it, not a high gloss. Um, but yeah, you could do this just about anywhere you could think of. It's great for furniture, cabinetry car dashboards, uh, interior woodwork home cars. Yeah, knickknacks around the house, little stuff. But there you have it, brown mahogany. I want to keep saying walnut, knucklehead. Um, pretty simple. Before we go, if I could ask you to do me a favor, go down below and hit the subscribe button. And what that will do is once you subscribe, you will be notified when new videos come out and live chat sessions take place. Um, it'll give you an update. And if you don't mind, hit the like button while you're down there so I know you, you like what I'm doing and I continue to do it. But that's it. I want to thank you for watching. My name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Foe School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops and complete commission projects for clients all around the world. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.